<clears throat> hey fellas, where you been? Oh, I've been making videos all the time. You guys just haven't been watching them. No, I haven't actually. I've been busy doing some other stuff. Uh, I have been making models, but uh, just hadn't felt like making a video. So, I don't know. We're going to change all that. Um, I decided to take on a little project for a guy. And I knew I wouldn't, I said I wasn't going to take commissions, but, uh, uh, you know, the guy got a hold of me. It was an interesting project that he's wanting me to do. And uh, I gave him a price and he said, okay. So, uh, but I'm doing a set of probably, what was it, maybe four or five, maybe, uh, German jets from World War II. And I've already done an ME-262, and I uh, got that shipped off to him. It's supposed to arrive there yesterday, so I haven't heard from him. Hopefully it's okay. If not, I'll take care of it. Build him another one if I have to. Um, but he's sending me a 132nd scale Comet, which I'm going to do. And I always like doing the World War II German stuff because they've got such cool camouflages and, and uh, different colors. They're just interesting to me. And, uh, and then he's got some other ones, the, uh, the flying wing thing. I've already built one. I forgot. For some reason, I'm having a brain fart this morning. And, uh, but I'm going to be doing probably a couple of those <clears throat> as well. So, um, but anyway, I will probably start another video as soon as I get the kit and start building it. Maybe next week, hopefully. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to show you something. My buddy Jody... Him and I did a collaboration. He's part of my East Coast development team here at Prime Model Works. And he talked me into doing this one. And if, if you know what this is, you're a big Top Gun fan. Yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to do another Top Gun Tomcat, but I found some extra decals in my decal box. And I decided, what the heck, let's get this one done. I've always wanted to recreate that. Uh, that scene from Top Gun where he goes inverted. Well, I don't know what I'm doing with my hand. I just showed you the dang model. But I always wanted to do this one. And uh, Jody kind of helped me out with some ideas. And I think it looks really cool. So I am going to put this one up for sale on eBay. And um, I will put a link in the description. So uh, we'll take a look at it here in a minute. And um, show you all about it. So those people that want to buy it on eBay. I'll probably put a link in, in on my eBay auction. So they can get a closer look at it because there's just so much stuff going on with this one. It's kind of hard to show in just a, a few pictures. So, um, all right, we'll take a look at this one. And, um, like I said, I'll probably be doing another build series coming up here in a, in the next week. And I'll start putting out more videos here, um, in the, in the next couple months. So, all right, we'll take a look at it. All righty, fellas, let's take a look at what we got here. Now, I really like how this turned out. I uh, wasn't quite sure how I was going to mount it, and Jody, my buddy Jody, came up with the idea to mount it this way, and I think it turned out really cool. Now, I did have to use some thicker acrylic rods in the back because if I these are 3 8 inch in diameter. If I use the smaller ones like I normally do, I think I normally use a quarter inch, then uh, I think there would have been too much give and I really wanted this to be solid since I am having it inverted and it's basically uh, lying at a, at a 90 degree angle. So I didn't want any give on there and these thicker rods allow it to, uh, to be really sturdy. Now for the one down here, and we'll take a look at it here in a minute, I did use the quarter inch and shot it right up through the bottom of the, uh, the F5F here. So let's pull this, well, we'll turn it around. Now, I don't normally do a lot of weathering on the bottom of my plane, especially when I mount them on a base, because you're really never going to see it. But since this is going to be a really visible part, I did do a lot of extra weathering on the bottom, just based off some reference pictures, and I think it looks pretty cool. Unfortunately, since this is mounted this way, you don't get to see a whole lot of detail on the top. Now, I did build it the same way that I do my other ones. I just added uh, the, the extra weathering on the bottom. I also, if you'll notice... Uh, on my other ones, I had the uh, these two things on the bottom here on my other planes. I didn't do that because the, the movie plane was set up this way. 
It had the AIM-7s and the AIM-9s, the two fuel tanks, and then there wasn't a rack down here on the bottom. They just had this one on top. So there we go. I'll go ahead and take this off and it slides right off. It's like so, and then there's the top. The lighting here is not great, but so I basically built it just like my other ones, just a little extra weathering on the bottom. And then we have, uh, take the, these off. These are uh, attached with magnets, so no worries there. Go ahead and rip these off so I don't break them while I'm showing you stuff. Okay. And you can take a look at Maverick. Now, I had to do a lot of work to get Maverick flipping, uh, flipping the guy off. So what I did with the pilots is uh, I used the Tamiya pilots, but then I used an arm from another kit on a guy. And I basically, because the uh, in the movie he doesn't have a, his he's got his sleeve rolled up. And then uh, when he flips the guy off. So I just used an arm from one of my Hasegawa, I don't know, U.S. Navy pilot and crew kits. And it was probably like a crew member. And then I had to cut the hand off. And I did about three different cuts trying to get the uh, the finger just right. So I'll show up some pictures of, of what that looked like. And uh, in, the, in the heads, I had to, I tilted the heads back on both of these guys. So I had to, you know, kind of do some carving and cutting. But uh, I got Maverick looking up and then flipping the guy off. So... You know, a little bit of work, but I think it turned out pretty cool. And the way the way he sits in there, you can really see the the uh, the middle finger. So there's that. And then the F5F, or what they call the MiG-28 in the movie. Uh, these are kind of hard to find. This is an AVF club. Now, Monogram makes a, a 148 scale F5F. But obviously, you got to rescribe the panel line. So I found this one online. It was like 50 bucks. It's a decent kit. It's really simple. But, um, you know, there's there's not a whole lot to it. And with the paint job, uh, it's straight black. And in the movie, from what I understand, they gave it a gloss black or semi-gloss finish and painted over it. And it did start to chip. Um, the movie plane started to chip. Now, I didn't add any chipping to this. I really didn't think it was necessary. Um, but, uh, basically a gloss black finish and I did add a little bit of highlights, but with the gloss finish, it doesn't show up that well. Now, if I would have flat coated this, those little bit of highlights I added with NATO black would have popped up, but, uh, the, you just really can't tell with this glossy finish. It was so subtle. Now also with the pilot on this one, I don't know if the video will pick it up, but I did uh, also cut his head off and tilt it back a little bit. So he's, he's looking up just like he did in the movie. And this has removable uh, missiles with the with the magnets, and also I've I just left the um, the uh, horizontal stabilizers where I can just take them off because I am going to ship this thing. So not much to this, you know, pretty simple build, and uh, I don't know, I think it looks pretty cool. Now the base, Jody came up with this idea with uh, putting up the keeping up foreign relations because when Tom Cruise was talking about being inverted over this MiG. Uh, they, the the, uh, the chicky do asked him what uh, what he was doing, and he was communi He said he was communicating and and keeping up foreign relations by giving the guy the bird. So uh, that's where that comes from. So there we go. Um, I am happy with this. Now with these, what I had normally done, what I initially done was just have the uh, the rods come up at an angle straight up and then over but with the the tomcat on here the tail interfered with it so as you can see there i had to do a lot of bending to get that tail to fit like that otherwise the end of my tail was going to run into that acrylic rod so the way i got it now it fits just right it was like a matter of of centimeters <laughs> so well that's it I'm gonna flash up a bunch of pictures and like I said I'm gonna start a new video series here hopefully in the next few days and uh, I will see you then thanks for watching fellas